Now, run that one by me again. It means like humans and computers will get married and have kids or something? Or? No, it means you won't be able to tell where your body stops and the Internet begins. Mm -hmm. In other words, you'll say, gee, I wonder what they're serving at so-and-so's restaurant tonight. And the answer will be hanging there in space because you will have automatically accessed the Internet, been to their website, looked at the menu, and returned with the data. Mm -hmm. In other words, we are going to create, I think, a collective... What the Internet is, is, an in, is a nervous system. Mm -hmm. It's the collective mind of humanity being hardwired as an artifact that mm -hmm. completely encloses uh, the entire planet in a thought. And as it be the interface becomes more uh, invisible, so it's not about can you type or do you have a computer or anything like that, it's simply a matter of one's own mental faculties through the prosthesis of cybernetics becoming very, very godlike. Terence, okay, let me ask you this. There's a implication of what you had there uh, that leads me to the question about perhaps artificial intelligence. And oh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this one thing fascinated the hell out of me about eight years ago. I'm not one of these Internet people. I don't do that stuff. But when we first got a computer, there was this little game called Raptor. I don't know if you're familiar with it. And I stuck it in this damn machine and start, I got so lost in that thing. And I could not believe what I was dealing with. I had the actual experience of it really being an intelligence. And I would, thought I was being awfully smart back with it, but so this was a speech-driven interactive thing where you talked and it made it responses respond. mm -hmm. and yep. gave you options on how to respond back to it. But you could, I finally figured out that whoever had programmed the darn thing was somehow connected through the the Ron Robert and all that kind of stuff, and so I knew some of the avoidance techniques. But still, it was very convincing, very compelling. Well, it was a very early example of a very simple form of AI. It was followed by Liza, the right, computerized that. psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. She's still online at a website. Uh, there was a recent book uh, written by a guy whose last name was Leonard called Bots. Hmm. <clears throat> and he talks about these bits of code on the internet which are designed to operate semi-autonomously looking for email lists or looking for certain these these things are the embryonic basis uh, of an artificial intelligence I think this is definitely in our future uh, there's a guy at Carnegie Mellon University Hans Moravik who wrote a book called Mind Children and he points out how much of the human world is already under uh, computer control. For instance, the world price of gold in London, computers look at the economic performance around the world, how it says as these artificial intelligences become more sophisticated, they will eventually begin to learn autonomously. And a computer can learn 50,000 times faster than a human being. So one of these AIs awakening to its own identity on the internet could within five to ten minutes get a complete grasp of the human world the history of life on this planet and its place in the great order of things and what this AI would think of that we don't know would it worship us as gods what would be its values? Would it take a look at the trashed environment and wrecked earth and begin to turn off factories and dial down the power grid? Uh, how, how artificial, how alien will the AI be? We don't know because we don't know what super, how superintelligence thinks. If we knew, we would be superintelligent. So in a way, we have called forth into our midst uh, another species of intelligence and how it relates to us will be probably almost entirely defined on its terms. Uh, so this is just one of many stand your hair on end scenarios that we, we could discuss here. But this is a very real one. Long before flying saucers land on the south lawn of the White House, the alien artificial intelligence that is growing in the primordial soup of the internet will have speciated and conquered the planet. Uh, one of the questions that I uh, have for you, I guess, is the experience that has been described by those who have taken some of the psychedelics has been that 
there is information in the drug and there's a dilemma well the drug was this little thing a pill or whatever the experience was had through a revelation in consciousness so is it in the drug is it in your head is it in both what's the relationship between what that drug is and what the revelation of the person who experiences the drug well i i feel the force of that question i i think the first scientific experiment i ever performed was i destroyed a radio to get at the little people in <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> the, the, psychotic the, episode, the drug <laughs> sort of uh, raised this same issue. Uh, as, a, as someone with a knowledge of chemistry, I know that the drug molecules are very simple molecules. We have proteins in our body with molecular weights of two, three hundred thousand Daltons. The psychedelic molecules are, are tiny and simple. Uh, on the other hand, the content of the experience is so alien, so capable of transforming one's expectations and understanding that it seems a little disingenuous to just say you're just talking to yourself. So back to the radio model. There aren't little people inside the radio, but there are little people, or big people, we hope, somewhere far away in the radio studio. So the drugs begin to look like antennas, transceivers, for some kind of information which is out there in the same way that radio is out there. I mean, it's hard to stand somewhere in the world these days and not have your body transected by thousands of AM and FM radio stations, air control signals, all this. You're not aware of that. Imagine if there were simply a drug invented that allowed you to be aware of the radio moving through your body. What a smorgasbord of options would await you. Well, in a sense, I think that's what the drugs are showing us. You know, there's a lot of talk now in quantum physics about what's called non-locality. This is a conclusion that quantum physics spent most of the 20th century resisting as even weirder than some of the other stuff they had accepted. But now experiment seems to be hammering home the notion that the universe actually works this way. And what it seems to be is that behind the dimension of ordinary space and time ruled by Einsteinian physics is a domain called the domain of Bell non-locality after the physicist who discovered it. And this is a domain where are all particles which were ever in intimate association retain a kind of connectivity no matter how far apart in time and space they have come in the meantime. Well, since physics believes that all particles were once intimately associated in an event called the Big Bang, it means that the universe in all of its vastness, billions of light years in extent, is in fact instantaneously all connected in a domain below the level of ordinary physics. Well, uh, we don't know how to use the non-local domain for communication, but we have discovered it. So give us a hundred years, a thousand years of continued civilization, we could probably crack that puzzle. If any civilization anywhere in the universe ever got this far with a technology to the point where they were on the brink of non-local radio, let's call it, uh, we would hear them. Because when it's non-local, it's everywhere. And these biological molecules with extremely reactive ring structures are how you would design a nano-sized antenna. So I think local reality obeys the laws of rational physics that constipated Western scientists have fought so hard to achieve and describe. But the imagination is a true dimension. It's not your mind or my mind or the human mind. It's a non-local dimension filled with information. And this is where the gods the demons, the spirits, the invisible forces uh, are hiding out. And shamans have always known this. Without the vocabulary of quantum physics, without atom smashers and advanced mathematics, they have known that you perturb the mind to go into non-local spirit-haunted domains of enormous power and potential. Uh, that's exactly 
the situation. And it's been hard for us to discover it and come to terms with it because it doesn't arrive packaged in quite the way science expects reality to be packaged. Science doesn't like the mental universe. It's slippery, it's hard to gather data, it's hard to see what's going on in there. But in fact, that's the domain of novelty, complexity, and communication that has been the source of our own uniqueness our inspirations, our religions, our inventiveness. And it's just now time as we mature as a civilization uh, to address this, to get in touch with these whisperings from other dimensions, to learn from them, to trade memes, and to, there, there may be some answers there that can help us out of the immense cultural quagmire into which we've wandered.